Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops for psychological operations is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does PSYOPs fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that first and foremost, PSYOPs save lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOPs. They think it's something deviant and brainwashing. you don't know exactly what's going on right now but we do know that there are some psyops going on right ma'am i don't know cinema psyops and i believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today why i believe that is because i know how it feels i know what it does to you cinema psyops they think it's something devious and brainwashing to the 303rd consecutive week of Cinema PsyOps. That is 303 consecutive weeks of two immature morons talking movies in your ears via the pod waves. I'm your host, Court, the guy that just can't fucking wait to get this movie review over with. And joining me live via Skype in a very similar grouchy fucking mood for his Memorial Day off is my co-host, Matt. What's up, you fucking mathlete? <laughs> fucking this? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it all went down fucking hell, didn't it? Okay, so I'm watching this earlier today, and yeah. I'm telling my wife, I can't believe I'm watching this. This fucking sucks. Like, I'm just like, I'm just really, really just belittling the film and just being like really, really fucking constant I mean, about it. And yeah. Just, like really, really kind of like immature, and she's like, "Okay, um, you have to do this review. N- no, you don't have to do the movie. Well, it's a full franchise fest, and you can't say full franchise if you don't do the full franchise." Almost had the same conversation verbatim. I, I even said, I told my wife while I was watching it, I go, I was coming up to get a drink, taking a break, and I go, I cannot believe a movie that has literally two Oscar winners in it is this bad. <laughs> future oscar winners but still no. it's bad yeah it's true this is this is pretty goddamn terrible like it's really gonna be hard to find this is this is a star-studded piece of shit it's gonna be extremely fucking hard to find positive things to say yeah. while we're doing the uh, review i, I just let, let's let's get it out of the way now number one was the art student who really cared about his work who did a great movie number two is an art student who got really stoned and made a movie number three no high somebody... on coke it was three was the one that, that you always say it got stoned it was the three that's the stoned one yeah three is the super ultra high hessian stoner metal dude movie to you and two is the frenetic cocaine movie yes you're right you're right two is the cocaine movie three is the stoner movie well then this one was done by a guy on a meth 
you know, a meth trip. This guy was highly addicted to meth, whoever made this. It's funny that you mentioned that because yeah. the person who is most responsible for this is, in fact, Kim Hinkle, the co-writer of the original. Oh, well, yeah, they were on meth, a lot of it, when they did this. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what stuff he may or may not have been taking, and I'm not exactly sure what influenced a lot of the decisions that went into this film, but, like, I talked a lot last week about a horse designed by Kim Committee. This is someone who needed someone to tell him yeah, this was a no. bad decision in a lot of cases. And I'm sure it probably whatever studio may have fucked with it as well. But yeah, you but, you can't go back and try to recapture lightning in a bottle no, by not like this. doing it exactly the same thing. This is, in my book, a much more miserable failure at trying to do a direct sequel to the original than part two was. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> this was, this is the worst so far of the bunch for me. Just not, <laughs> not, not to let, you know, not to ruin it for anybody. Uh, this was the worst one out of all of them. <laughs> I will have a few things that I will be able to like talk about and be like a yeah. little upbeat about, but for the most part, like I will probably remain silent because not that I listened to her ever really, but um, I did take one thing to heart whenever both my mother and my kindergarten teacher told me that if you don't have something nice to say, don't don't say anything at all. So while you're really? doing, you, you've actually listened to that because I've known you for a lot of years, and usually you just let that shit fly. Can't you just go back to trying to push your liver back in under the skin, you fucking alcoholic, for two seconds and let me fucking oh oh I just uh, proved your point, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, you really, you really did. And no, I can't. I think I've told you I don't actually have a liver. It's just a machine in there now. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, well, while we try to clean out the gunk in the machine that was formerly Matt's liver, let's take that Legion Patreon ad break and we will come back and get into this review and just get this pain over with. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. obviously fucked up so maybe hopefully i can fix it in time otherwise i'll just you know have to find something else to substitute out jesus oh wow that was sounding fucking terrible <laughs> it's a neat enough song and everything but the particular yeah. mp3 i was playing for us was jumping around really really badly and um that's <laughs> that's shameful almost as shameful as this fucking trailer <laughs> each of us has known the fear of being alone lost in the darkness Faced with the unknown. But there is one fear shrouded in our past, lost in our subconscious, that should never have been forgotten. 
a fear so deep it cuts to the bone. The American legend returns to bring you back to the cutting edge of terror. Welcome to my world. Hello, you got her. Don't you ever touch me? If you're gonna kill me, then do it. Matthew McConaughey of A Time to Kill. Renee Zellweger of Jerry Maguire. Are you having fun here? <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. If looks could kill, he wouldn't need a chainsaw. Can I ask real quick, is this one of those that was made you know, early in their careers, never put out because no one was like, this can't go out. They, they didn't put it out. And then Matthew McConaughey and Rizel, Renee Zellweger became big stars and they were like, well, we got this and they're in it. Let's just put it out. Um, That's almost exactly what happened. So they filmed it in like the early, early 90s, you know, and yeah. like 94, it was wrapped well, by 94. The movie, it says, are in 1996. Right. But I mean, they yeah. shot in 94. The movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They shot in 1994. For, and then it went to a couple of things, but then it was like released theatrically in like 95 or whatever. But in 97, that's when it got re edited and retitled because it was originally released as uh, Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or some shit like that. Yeah. But in like 1997, just after Zellweger uh, hit it in Jerry Maguire real big and Matthew McConaughey hit it real big in A Time to Kill, yeah, they were using that to try and like, you know, sell the movie. Yeah, saw the movie yeah it's, in. it's in the trailers and everything but yeah. it's rumored allegedly that there was pushback from both Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey's like producers and agents and things like they were oh, pushing wow. back against like getting this movie released they were trying to stop it the producers agreed to that and then they were trying to keep them from releasing the film theatrically yeah. and you know that like there was this big because it wasn't like they were going to go on like a press tour for it at all <laughs> no but like they were trying to bury it and just bury apparently, it wow. yeah allegedly I mean, they were trying to for them you know everyone's done a bad movie <laughs> yeah well allegedly they were trying so hard to bury it and make it just go away like the where it couldn't even be released theatrically which uh kim hinkle had obviously issues with the guy who wrote and directed this film and then the studio themselves are going to have some complications with that as well but yeah. uh i don't know if it ever got a full-fledged theatrical release in 97 again or not that i have no fucking clue about i just know that it took forever for it to be released and then when uh Shout Factory tried to do, to do the Blu-ray ages ago. Fucking McConaughey and Zellinger were trying to bury that too, apparently. Jesus, Allegedly. That's hilarious. I mean they left I mean they've I mean they've both had some crappy ass movies, so I don't know why this one's the bother someone for him, but alright. I mean I- yeah, I have no. I mean, it's a clue. bad movie, but it's not like they're like fucking all out, like you know, nude or some shit. You know, like that. I you understand some like Hollywood star is trying to get rid of. Right. What? Whatever. We're about to talk about exactly why they would not want this film out there. All right. Wow. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The next generation. Uh, also on the nineties. Next generation. Just probably probably big back of Star Trek. The next generation. Our boy Ken from Rhode Island said that he prefers Texas Chainsaw Massacre colon Voyager. Voyager. <laughs> Uh, I thought maybe he'd have been more of a Deep Space Nine type of guy. So anyway. Yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Deep Space Nine sure is really weird and out there. It's out there, but man, I really like the political feel it gives. <laughs> yeah, the Ferengi actually would fit in quite well with any of the Sawyers slash Slaughters or whatever the fuck <laughs> the name of that like, family's supposed to be. They'd be like, I don't, I don't know what you're doing with whatever any of these shipments are, but here's <laughs> to give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Leather goods, you say? Interesting. Yeah, interesting. All right. Um, all right. So, um, well, we start out, and hey, they have a little narration story, so of course it's our first clip. Might as well be. August 18th, 1973. News of a bizarre chainsaw-wielding family. Reports which were to ignite the world's imagination began to filter out of Central Texas. Regrettably... Not one of the family members was ever apprehended, and for more than 10 years, nothing further was heard. Then, over the next several years, at least two minor yet apparently related incidents were reported. Then again, nothing. For five long years, silence. 
Okay, so they're trying to discount both two and three as these minor incidents that, you know, were apparently related. Yeah. And set this up that this is the only true sequel. This is goddamn Godzilla syndrome. Like, there's like a, yeah. there's like an entire, like, one of the eras of Godzilla where it's literally like the only movie they accept is the original Godzilla, and every movie is a direct sequel to the original 1954 Godzilla. <laughs> And that's what they're trying to do with TCM in this series. Like, part two is like, yeah, that happened, but now let's move on. And then part three is like, yeah, that happened, but let's move on. No, no, there was no in between. And now part yeah, four right? is like, yeah, that happened, that happened, and that happened, but let's move on. <laughs> Those didn't exist. Those are minor incidents. <laughs> yeah, we no, none of that happened. Shh, nothing, nothing real. It's nothing's happened. So anyway, we see it's May 22nd, 1996, and we see Renee Zellberger. She's clearly getting ready for prom. And there's a bunch of weird, you know, character. That, 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 and nothing that matters to the story at all is happening until, well, at the prom, her friend Heather finds her boyfriend Barry making out with another girl. She gets in Barry's dad's car and drives away, and Barry's able to come in, you know, hop in. And Barry is what we would like to averagely call, uh, affectionately call, a trumper. Because he definitely would be a trumper, the way he acts in this movie. Um, he blames her, uh, the reason he was making out with another chick, blames her because she won't give him any sex, and then states that if guys don't get any sex, they get prostate cancer, he should know his dad is a uh, doctor. As he's like going off on her like that, all of a sudden, Renee Zellweger and her her, her friend Sean pop up, her date Sean, out of the back seat. And she's like, well, he's lying. And they get somewhat to a fender bender and Heather just drives away. And Heather and uh, Renee Zellweger is like, he's lying. That's None of that's true. That's horseshit. And then he goes off on her, calling her a stupid bitch and says, you know, you, you, it's just because you're an ugly. And I mean, he He's just, just a really fucking shit human being. Like, it's really bad. I want to play devil's advocate so that we have something to talk about here, but I am just going to point out that I wanted to do it, and that will be the thing that I talk about and stop here. <laughs> yeah, all right. There you go. Because he is a piece of shit. And as they're all talking, and he's like, yeah, you and Sean, like, they're not even dating. They're just friends. And he goes, oh, and then he can tell they're smoking weed in the back. So now he's really more pissed. And then all of a sudden they get T-boned by another car. Uh, not before Heather while they're driving because they keep having to go around. There's no place for them to uh, turn around. Uh, like they can't just back up at all. Uh, they could, uh, but they're apparently not. So uh, while they do that, Heather goes off of what if, what if we were like, what if they got caught up and like caught and killed by some people in the fort? Like she's really into being murdered. It seems, and it's kind of, I don't know how healthy that is either. Uh, She's but obsessed a, with death, bad. and she keeps yeah. asking all these questions, and it's kind of the typical 90s teen, or at least that's how I was in the 90s, where I was constantly coming up with scenarios on how I was going to die at that exact moment while yeah. riding in cars, bored out of my mind in the back roads of country. I mean, like, I totally get where this girl is coming from, especially with a boyfriend like she kind of has here, who is trying to manipulate her and lie his way into having sex with her. And apparently has been using this excuse and been yeah, making Sean shit up says, to grope women forever, too. Yeah, because Sean says that he they used to be friends when they're growing up, and he u always uses this his dad line to like about his dad being a doctor and shit to get in chick's pants. Well, he said so, he said women would get breast cancer if their breasts were not felt fondled. Up. Yeah, yeah, felt so, up. Yeah. So he needed to fondle them, and that would help. And so he yeah. used that excuse to be able to fondle a bunch of breasts for a bunch bunch of different girls that they all grew up with so like i said uh this guy's pretty fucking gross yeah i mean he's a horrible 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 piece of shit obviously so they get out of the car after getting t-boned and the other driver gets out and he's like, i'm fine fine but he passes out probably from shock god this is yeah. so fucking terrible this guy's such <laughs> a horrible actor i know he's like i'm okay i'm okay and then he like doesn't even fall really well it's like he lays down on purpose i thought this guy was always part of it i yeah, honestly no. i honestly did yeah, like, I thought so that's too how at fucking one point. bad this movie is he is such yeah. a terrible actor he sounds like he's working some kind of bad con yeah, yeah right god this <laughs> sorry sorry Go ahead. You're all right. You're yeah, right. I'm fine. I go get ahead. it. So Renee Zellweger, Barry, and Heather, they go for help. And Sean's going to stay behind with the guy to make sure, you know, he's okay. Uh, well, they find a woman named Darla in her office. And they get in, and she, they let her know what happened. So she calls her boyfriend, Vilmer, who is a tow truck driver. And then she's, like, kind of talking. She's almost being very flirty with Renee Zellweger. And then uh, somebody... She's getting downright aggressive with the touching and fondling of some of these underaged kids, for fuck's sake. 
Yeah, it's mostly centered on Renee Zellweger. And then a baseball kind of comes flying through the window. And she goes, ah, it's just probably, you know, either a farmer's wife. And she goes, like I'd ever. Like I'd be interested. And she flashes her boobs. So I guess, thanks, movie. Uh, yeah, and, she uh, gives two different things. Because right after she's done flashing her boobs, she says that a bunch of teenage boys will do that then, just to get you. Yeah, well, she said, or it could be teenage boys just trying to get a glimpse. Right. So and like, I think it was teenage is, boys because I could hear them hooting and hollering as they drove away. So. Right, right. But, like, <laughs> if you were flashing your breasts that you proudly talk about how you've already paid for them yeah yeah and how they've already paid for themselves since you've gotten them right right like if you are flashing them every time someone breaks a window to your office you are just encouraging them to break windows in order to see your breasts yeah pretty much so then uh, the three walk off to go meet up with sean again uh then um vilmer shows up to sean and he checks on the driver and he says that he's dead and sean's like no he was just talking he goes really and then vilmer breaks the passed out guy's neck and so it's like okay so he's dead then uh and he he does it very matthew mcconaughey where he like psychs himself out and you know starts making weird noises and yeah it's peak mcconaughey like eventually this is very much mcconaughey yeah eventually mcconaughey is going to be become like this joke character actor kind of like what's Nick Cage has become lately, where yeah. you're always looking for him to be like, well, brother, peak McConaughey time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smoking a Pretty cigarette much. like a psychopath all and right, staring off right, into space. All right. Yeah, saying, all right, all right, all right, and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be peak McConaughey time. In this movie, we get peak McConaughey. Yes, we definitely do get peak McConaughey. So, while uh, it, that happens, Sean runs, and weirdly enough, Sean sticks to the road while running. Sean ain't the smartest kid in the, in the world. <laughs> Doesn't even run into the forest, so McConaughey just chases after him in his in his tow truck, and Sean's getting tired. So then Sean, uh, McConaughey just uh, Velmer just runs him over and uh, kills him by running him over constantly. It, he never even tried to leave the road. It's it seems weird if you're getting chased by a car in the forest, dip into the forest because they at least can't use the car to chase you where you're expounding all your energy and they don't have to. Also, uh, he runs over him like nine or ten times, yeah, and until he finally says, "Yeah, now." he's definitely dead yeah and then he continues this one ought to do it (laughs) yeah and then he just continues to back over him and run over him like several more times i'm like when you see the what's supposed to be the dude's body later after this egregious death you you would think that perhaps it would be a lot more flattened and gross and bloody but it looks an awful lot like he just died of natural causes from the fear of almost being run over yeah it it does definitely seem like that when you finally see him but all right then whatever i don't know where their budget went if they had one i just Um, think everything was poorly planned and executed matt that's yeah that's my thought yeah i agree um so uh so the three are walking back and then they see a truck driving around and it turns down a road barry and heather go chasing that truck and um, Renee Zellweger says she's going to go get Sean, and she leaves. And that ends the first 20 minutes of the movie. It also ends my ability to watch the movie. Um, I'm going okay, to let you know. We just went through the first 20 minutes of the movie, our introduction, everything. All the pablum we do at the beginning. We're only 31 minutes into our episode right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we're, we're going to move I, through it, this it, a lot quicker than that, actually. Um, yeah. I just wanted to flat out state that... The first 20 minutes of the film that we have, the way that it's set up and the way that they're trying to deliver stuff, this is bad for even a fourth installment in a franchise that has rapidly declined. And for an attempt to reboot the franchise as a sequel, doing a reboot quill, if you will, and trying to expand the universe and all the things that they tried to do with this, they set it all up very poorly. The scope with which they try to develop the influence of the family and the things that the family from the Texas Chainsaw Massacres are involved in, they do not give enough weight or credence to that to make it believable in any way, and yet are still trying to ram it down your throat that that is, in fact, what is happening. Yeah. We should have, in the first 20 minutes, had some kind of indication of just the scope of the reach of people involved with this family. And I'm trying to say that as respectfully as I can to the plot as we go along here, because I still need to be somewhat professional about this. But I feel feel that this film was literally just being made up as they went along. Like, I do not think if there was a script that they were following, I do not think at least in this recut version that we've seen that it was followed at all in the editing or there was any thought 
that to how of these story elements are going to all tie together because what they're trying to do and then what they end up doing with widening up the scope just seems like a last minute decision and force fed into us and kind of ham handedly placed there. <laughs> it, I agree. It really, I agree with everything really you're saying here. Yeah. And this 20 minutes does nothing to make you really want to complete the film at all. Like I wouldn't no. blame anybody who watched the first 20 minutes of this and said they bailed. Yeah, I would have. Uh, if I didn't have to do the notes on this and shit like that, and we weren't doing that, I th- there's damn near a point where I'm like, do we really have to do a true franchise fest? Really? I mean, because <laughs> right. yeah, this I'm- thing, this thing is hard to watch just because it's hard to watch and not because, you know, that because, oh my God, I'm so disturbed or this or that. It's hard to watch because it's just bad. <laughs> it, it, there's just nothing really redeeming in that first 20 minutes. Yeah, it feels very much like the much later Hellraiser franchise films where they literally just took a different script for a completely different movie and shoehorned Pinhead in there and called it a Hellraiser flick because they knew that would sell that script better. Oof. Uh, this very much feels like a sideloaded tale of a giant organization that they tried to tie in with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre just because they knew it would sell this script. Yeah. And so I think it was like an original script for something else that got retooled, probably by Hankel, because that's the only thing that people know him for or care about whenever he was trying to get the money, maybe. And so he just went with Texas Chainsaw because it was an easy way to get the movie he wanted to make done. And I think this is it. I don't know, because it sure seems like he would be super disappointed in how this turned out like if this was his intention i i I hope that he maybe wanted more than what this turned out to be because this is awful especially the first 20 minutes this is yeah (laughs) i mean i can't see how this is what he wanted (laughs) yeah i can't honestly i can't see see how he watched if he could have sat down and watched and said that's my vision this was exactly my vision yeah and i know for sure that we watched the like 85 ish minute theatrical cut one uh we didn't watch the extended cut the extended cut one or the director's cut one is like seven minutes more and apparently there's some backstory about renee zellweger's character where she is the victim of physical and possibly sexual abuse from a never-ending stream of stepfathers that literally that gets alluded to still in this one but not outright right but it's like outright shown at the beginning of the film so what they're they're trying to set up that there's a reason why she's so resistant to the horrible torture that she's about to go through yeah and it's because this is kind of her life already being treated like this so she's not afraid of not being able to be in control of what these people are going to be doing to her because she's used to that is what i think they were trying to hint at which is also pretty fucking egregious but we needed to bring that up here because that was going to be the beginning of the film and that's not there that's really the only big difference that and there's like more gore and and grew but not enough to really do a fucking thing to save what we're about to go through yeah exactly (laughs) let's just fucking move on i'm done Uh, (laughs) next next i mean you said more than i thought you could um (laughs) and i tried to be like i said i'm trying to be as professional about this professional about it yeah i am i get yeah i I totally are but there's really not much else to say other than what i've just said about what we've just experienced (laughs) you know (laughs) that's it yeah nope you're you're exactly right and after watching the first 20 minutes i think most people would understand why both renee zellweger and matthew mcconaughey's people would not want this film out there when they had just won so many awards for acting and getting all these yeah. acolytes and being known in the early no, or, 90s. or they're not really winning awards yet but they're up and comers so i guess maybe that's the reason why they're i mean while they they kind of got their first big brush of fame they weren't established yet so this could really kind of maybe bring you down <laughs> In the Hollywood game. You know what I mean? So I guess I see that. Like if maybe if this was them middle of their careers, then I don't think they'd care as much, but it's not. It's you know yeah it's they, like they, they weren't quite as established yet they had both had two good outings in, in their movies you know and now they you know so they're starting to rockets are being strapped to them they're gonna get out of here and now this is gonna come out Oof. yeah I, I, maybe now i see it more of why they tried to stop this movie to come out because of where they were in their careers at that time oh yeah totally so and that's just in the first 20 minutes why it becomes so apparent yeah and just about now the people that 
that are going to be listening to this review are going to realize that if they haven't watched the movie, why they shouldn't. Because that hopelessness and that sense of I'm never going to be able to finish this. Oh, my God, how much time is left is about to really set in. <laughs> yes, it really, really is. Well, the next 20 starts. Renee Zellweger, she's walking down the road. She keeps hearing sounds and stuff, and she gets scared. And then a trash bag blows onto her face. It's a cheap jump scare. They make it um, seem like somebody threw a bag over her head the way that it happens because someone actually yeah. does pull that over her head, but then they turn it yeah, into a later. bag she pulls off. Right. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Barry, we cut to Barry and Heather talk, and that's our next clip. Barry, wait. Stop. What if they're murderers and they want us to follow them so they can hide behind trees and stab us? There could be dead people buried all around us, and we never know. They could tie us up in a cellar and no one would ever hear us. That's dumb. There aren't any cellars in the houses around here. <sighs> okay, that's it. Don't call me dumb, Barry. I may not be the smartest person in the world, but I'm not stupid. I just act that way sometimes to get people to like me, that's all. Yeah, right. <sighs> all those stories about murderers and people following me, I know it's not true. It's better than being bored. I'll tell you what's stupid is that line you gave me about you and that girl Brenda. I am a little kid would believe that. Jenny, that bitch, she started this whole thing. It's all her fault. You'd like to think. I'll tell you what it is. I'm a bitch. I'm just like my mother. But she can't stand my father. But she stays with him because she wants a certain kind of life. I don't, I don't care what anybody thinks. It's still the best way to get it. What's wrong with that? Forget it. Okay, fine, but you should have said something. It pisses me off that you let me go on like this. It's embarrassing. I told you I'm a bitch. If I wasn't such a chicken, I'd be more like Jenny. No, you wouldn't. You're probably right. She's a dog. Oh, huh? You just don't know. What? Everyone thinks she's such a wuss, right? Right. Her mother gets married every 15 minutes, and her husbands are always hating on her. That's why she's the way she is. But I've had P.E. with her. She's got a body to die for. Really? Gross. That guy like gets interested yeah. at that. The only thing that now the only time he's interested is because yeah, she's got a body to die for. Oh, apparently, to die. Yeah. Oh, fucking! I hate everyone. Um, <laughs> I hate people. So. Uh, then, uh, we see, we cut back to Renee Zellweger, and, uh, she's back to the scene of the car crash, but the cars are gone, and the only thing she can find is one hubcap. Then, uh, we cut back to Barry and Heather, and they come to the house, and they're kind of looking around. She's sitting down, and he goes around in the front, and he goes around back. He gets held at gunpoint by another man, uh, who has all these quotes, and, you know, that's all he speaks in, is pretty much quotes. Um, we cut back to Heather, and Leatherface is behind her, kind of messing with her hair, but she's not really noticing it. And then he walks away a little too much and he knocks over a broom that Lance scares her. She runs, he chases, he grabs her, drags her into the house, throws her in a freezer, and then puts something on top of it. She keeps opening up the freezer. The guy holding Barry by gunpoint sends Barry into the house. And right before Barry goes in the house, he goes, Hey, this is kidnapping. I should know my dad's a lawyer. So, uh, I, I, is it, it's probably not even true. His dad's probably not even a fucking doctor at this point. His dad's probably just some fucking shyster business man. No, it's like Trace McNeil's uh, crazy cat lady character from The Simpsons who was both a doctor and a lawyer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then went nuts from the stress and started hurling cats at people because she just had a bunch of cats. That's that's right, yeah. There you go. Uh, so anyway, uh, he goes through the house and he takes a piss because he has to take a piss and he finds the toilet. Then he starts breaking. He starts yelling out for Heather. He goes, hey, Heather, I tricked this guy into letting me in the house and I locked him out. Like he did anything, you know. So he's bragging. Then Leatherface shows up and smacks him right in the head with a hammer. He goes down. Then he pulls Heather, Leatherface pulls Heather out of the freezer and hooks her. So, all right, I guess. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of lackluster. That must be Barry's end. He must be dead because we never see him again. So um, it's really a lackluster death for an asset whole character and you know there's no enjoyment out of it no nothing for the audience it's just it's an action that happens i you think they just abandoned it. it that's all i think they just yeah. abandoned that moment. you think maybe they're gonna have more to do with barry and then decided fuck it we just don't have the time yeah it probably got cut out or trimmed out because it just didn't work or maybe they shot yeah. it you know maybe they never shot it um and it just got ripped out of the script or maybe they did shoot it and then this recut the for the theatrical version that we're watching was somehow um 
you know, they cut it out for just that portion of it, so we didn't see it. Yeah. You know, if it if it there is a resolution of it, but either way, this particular version that they tried to sell it's as just, the main forgotten. version, it's just yeah, it's gone, <laughs> and so that's what people in theaters would have been exposed to at the time. Yeah, Jesus, just sad, really is. So, um. Then we cut back to the tow truck driver. He finds Renee Zellweger, and that's our next clip. You don't need to be walking these roads alone this time of night. Why don't you get in? Are you the one that moved the cars? Listen, either you want to ride or you don't. It's up to you. Well, where are you going? Where's Sean? Where do you want to go? Where's Sean? Is that your boyfriend? Yeah, he was the one that wasn't hurt. Do you know where he is? I know exactly where he is. Now, why don't you get in? Well, where is he? God damn it, I said get in the truck. <laughs> well, wait, wait a second. Hang on. Yeah. You got to watch getting into cars with strangers these days. I heard about an old man once. Picked up a little girl on the side of the road. Chopped both her arms off and stuck her in the culvert. Left her for dead. God, I fucking hate that. I mean, that sorry son of a bitch didn't have shit for an imagination. How fucking simple can you get? Stop, you're scaring me. Scaring you? You're not scared. You don't know shit about being scared, little girl. Not yet. You want scared? You want scared? Have a look behind you. Have a look. Yeah, how about that, huh? Look again, goddammit. Go ahead, look again. I think I want you to stop and let me out. (laughs) You think? Or do you know? Huh? Go ahead and have a look. But you better look. No. no you don't want to look. No, no. What's your goddamn problem? Okay. <laughs> Could you stop? I'll look. You want it to stop? Yes. Stop it. Ow. Ow. Can I have a look at that? Ow. Ow. Have a look at that. Ow. 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 Yeah, of course you gotta throw in a little something extra. Just let them know it ain't Saturday morning cartoons, if you know what I mean. What's gonna happen to me? You think I give a goddamn what happens to you? Are you letting me go? <laughs> you figure it out. It's your goddamn life. I don't understand. Well, welcome to the real world. All right, well, and what we should explain what's in the back is fucking uh the two dead kids the two dead kids uh sean and the other driver yeah the so very not that. crushed sean and then the very bad actor who passed out slash buckled his knees and fell backwards in a weird way down to the ground yeah <laughs> i don't know who was directing this other than kim hinkle but like i i feel like i would have asked for a better take of him falling to the ground if they were trying to you know i just feel like he has to be somehow in on it is yeah. what is what they were initially trying for him to be acting like that i just i'm wanting to give the actor the benefit of the doubt because it's really bad it's really bad like, <laughs> oh. yeah, okay I'm, I'm fixating again i gotta stop i'm gonna just pull back and stop <laughs> oh yeah it's all bad it's all it's all just bad so um let's see here all right so uh she then bolts out of the car and unlike sean she's very smart she runs into the woods he mcconaughey flashes light in there he goes oh you don't want okay this is your choice life's all about choices and he leaves or after that we see why it's leatherface and we have a pretty extended chase here through the forest between uh, Renee Zellweger and Leatherface. The, there's a lot of chasing. Um, it's quite runs- padded, yes. Yeah, it's quite padded. They find she finds a house, she gets in there, and then there's this sheriff who looks dead. He's blue, but he's standing. But she grabs his gun. Inexplicably, she just never checks the gun to see if it's loaded. She tries to shoot at Leatherface, who busts open the door. Nothing happens, uh, because the gun's not loaded. So she hops through the window. Uh, he goes out after her. She's able to crawl up into a line. He cuts the line, but she falls into a tree. Um, and then she falls out of the tree, and she's able to run and get away as Leatherface gives chase. But she uh, is able to get away, and as she runs away, that's the end of that 20 minutes. At some point in that, she f- gets cut on the line, hits a tree, slides yeah. down the tree, and falls through the top of a uh, dilapidated greenhouse. Yes. And then Leatherface, in kind of a cool way, uh, just 
bulldoze it through the entire, uh, like, uh, the glass walls of the greenhouse. I thought that was actually kind of cool. Uh, this particular for, leather for face is a goddamn spaz, though. Yes, There's a lot is. of a lot of screaming and, tr- like, yeah. I feel like they were trying to parody Leatherface in this and make him comedic relief, like they did sort of with the Hitchhiker, where the Hitchhiker does stuff that makes you laugh, and then yeah, also with Chop Top as well. But I felt that's what they were trying to do with the... Uh, W, whoever the guy who held the gun on Barry. Yeah, the that's one that what kept, I felt like they were doing with him. Was the one that kept him, making like quotes from famous yeah, intellectuals uh-huh. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I felt like that's where the, I think with Leatherface they were trying to make him. I think they explained to somebody like they showed somebody some um the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie says hey all right now you act like Leatherface and he overacted Lever- Leatherface. Well, the now, person that's on, doing it is like a radio person personality or like a, yeah. like a, a comedian type personality and they're very clearly trying to do it in a comedic way or at least they Probably. can't fucking I don't, help themselves yeah i don't think they were asked to do it that way but i think that's just the way they decided to do it and whoever was directing it was like whatever i don't care it's leather face and that seems enough leather facey to me yeah and it feels like they just grabbed a cheap knockoff leather face mask that they just found somewhere yeah that in mask Iraq, it, instead of it being made specifically for him it's really a bad yeah, looking mask is horrific it's it's nothing like what I imagine when I think of Leatherface and what he's wearing. It looks like rubber. It does not look yeah. like dried human skin in any way, shape, or form, which they were able to recreate more than adequately on way less of a budget in the original. There's yeah. something about everything in this just feels artificial and just really kind of cheap rubbery done. Uh, yeah. I will say, at least before we move on to the next 20 minutes here, the very last bit that I, I've noticed that I really really enjoyed the set design for their house the way their house was decorated up how fucked up and um like the wallpaper how filthy it was how every like there was set pieces with like a corpse decomposing in one of the bathtubs just because um and then the way that the stuff was set up with the newspapers piled everywhere like they're you know hoarders or whatever and there's rooms that are just stuffed to the gills that make these narrow weird shaped corridors and things like that i felt that stuff was really well thought out and well planned and i really liked the way that that looked and the whole time that you're inside the house, you do have that uh, trapped underground corridors feeling that you get from part two a little bit with that. And I was yeah, kind of feel- enjoying some of it, but that's it. That's all I got from this that I could actually like in this 20 minutes. Yeah, I didn't get the, like the trapped in the house thing, but what I did feel was the chaos of of what the the Leatherface, uh, what that family supposed to be is, is nothing but pure chaos. And so the houses have always, or their base house, whatever, has always been chaos. And I felt the chaos of the house. Like you can never be comfortable in there. It's always high pressure there's no kicking back in that house yeah i think it's the same and design I, it's I just two different that. effects that we're getting yeah because yeah, when i yeah. say claustrophobia yeah you're uncomfortable there that's the point yeah, yeah no so yeah i, I get uh, it. Uh, but i agree with you there that that the set design the set design was done well for the house at least um, mcconaughey is in peak mcconaughey form and i yeah. feel like he's gone full-blown method in this and like he's just really really into it and the director didn't think to pull him back to a more believable form because this really feels like a guy just trying to go full bore crazy Texan like two seconds from screaming woo you know and like giddy yeah, up and right. shit like it just woo! feels like McConaughey's just going full bore McConaughey here and nobody's pulling him back like if he would have been pulled back just ever so slightly because even here he clearly has the acting chops and yeah. his intensity and the way he's staring at the camera like like he is intimidating and he is actually mm-hmm. scary. But then they do the thing with the leg and they do some other stuff and it's the movements are so herky jerky and comedic and just like not not believable and it feels like you're watching Scooby-Doo and yeah. then you just kind of lose the plot and then any bit of him being scary is immediately gone because it just becomes hokey again. The, the film I, just I, can't I, keep a tone. Yeah, at like one point you think you're about to hear, it does, it does remind you of like it's, it's Leatherface if, in, in the Scooby-Doo universe. You think you're about ready to hear someone go rah, 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 you know, like jinkies, this is, uh, this is crazy house. Kind of, yeah. It's, it just, it's such an uneven 
uneven tone. They don't know what they want to do with it. They want to make it intense. They want to make it scary. But then at the same time, yeah. it's very much this weird, goofy, cartoony thing. And it's the same kind of balance issues that Tobey Hooper had when he tried to do part two on his own. And it didn't quite balance out. And it did get goofy and it did get over the top. But the way that it went was more frenetic and intense and like poke out a brain hallucinatory. Whereas this feels like a bunch of comedians trying to make a scary movie and failing miserably at it because they can't stop trying to make it funny. Yeah, I, I guess I can see that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, it's just it's extremely frustrating. And the second 20 minutes like really sets in the fucking despair. And then we're almost to the, the full end of this because it's like just what it's like 80 ish minutes. So we're almost there. We're over halfway at this point. And it's just it just doesn't get any better. <laughs> Yeah. Right? <laughs> like that's it. It's, it's all just sharply downhill from here. Yeah, it never it never even gets average, you know? Like, uh, it's all right. It never even gets to all right. Yeah. It, it gets to I'm looking at the sets because I'm so bored with everything else and I'm trying to see yeah. all the detail that they tried to put together in the movie just for my own, you know, benefact, just to try and find something to talk about because I literally could find nothing other than the fact that I was really thoroughly not enjoying any of this and it's really badly put together in my mind. Well, and even like the the sets, like the house made no sense for a Leatherface house. It, it's supposed to be all body parts and shit and Thank <laughs> you. Oh, like, they're totally not cannibals in this in any way, shape, or form. Because no, there's, there's no, no way they're... he would have kept backing over that meat. That's not tenderizing. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's contaminating it with all sorts of particles and all glass and shit. And he's not they, that they, masochistic. They drop the cannibalism part of this altogether. No, this is a proto torture about... porn kind of thing. Yeah, is what they pretty much they created yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and start out the next twenty minutes. She runs to that Darla's office. Well, Darla calls someone named W. And and we find out that's the guy with the gun. And uh, he shows up and he starts zapping Renee Zellweger with like a cattle prod and then starts beating her with it. And uh, Darla is trying to tell her just to, you know, put the sack over her and throw in the trunk. She does, and which he does while he still beats and still sadistically uh, zaps her. Then Darla takes off and she says she's going to go pick up some pizzas with Renee Zellweger in the trunk. Then we get this... Almost for no reason seen of her picking up the pizzas. Um, you know, Renee's out. We're going to make a noise. The, the kid working there is almost goes to check on it. It doesn't. Then, uh, uh, Darla goes, opens up the trunk, tells her to shut up and makes an air hole for her and, uh, tells her she has to be quiet right before the cops show up and wonder what's in the trunk. But Darla just winks at him and he gets all flustered and walks away. Whatever. It's, it's a weird scene. I don't know what it's there for. It has serves no purpose. Uh, there were just, reshoots on this. So this may be yeah. something that producers shoved in just to try and add additional titillation or tension I, or just it, fill it did, time. Yeah. It's maybe like, oh, they almost got caught. Maybe she's almost saved. I, I guess I can see that. But. You could execute a delete on all of this footage of her going to pick up the pizzas and just have her. Yeah, and it would, would do. You wouldn't miss anything in the story. No, not at all. And it would make the film like at least five minutes shorter, which would yeah. lower the running time and make it that much more enjoyable for all of us wishing <laughs> it was over. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, driving back, she comes across Heather laying in the middle of the road. We have no idea how Heather escaped. We never saw it. You never see it. She's sitting there with the wound in her back. You don't know how Heather escaped. It makes no sense. You never see it, but she's laying there in the middle of the road. I assume they uh, let her go just for the fun of torturing her to drag her back in. I maybe, I guess, but you know, maybe it would have been nice to see something like that. Yeah. Have the hook um, break or have her somehow pull herself up off the hook. Something yeah. like give us something that would be somewhat entertaining, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anything, anything that could explain that. Well, anyway, she asked for help and Darla says one second, and Darla grabs the smallest little stick and starts trying to beat her to death but it's comical little you know beatings it's fucking stupid so she says all right don't go anywhere um and uh we'll 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 send someone to come get you and she drives away while she's still there um she gets home and we see Leatherface is getting zapped by W. So W is bullying Leatherface. She puts an end to that. She tells Leatherface to get Renee Zellweger. He pulls her out of the car. And then Darla tells her W about uh, Heather and that she'll need to be picked up. Well, then Darla meets up with Vilmer. And that's our next clip. Oh, sweetie, would you shut up? What are you so pissed off about? Huh? You having a bad day, huh? Why are my batteries not charged? W tells 
tell you? And son of a bitch, I tell you what, I told him to let you know that I was on my way for pizzas on the way home and he didn't tell you and I'm sick of it. Look what your brother did to this door. Nobody gives a damn about that door. Hey, mister, I have had it with you. I'm so sick and tired of you trying to stir up trouble between me and Bill. You're God the one causing problems. Ever since what you got here, been nothing you but here. trouble. Nobody gives a goddamn I'm the one that puts things door. together Nobody here. Cares. It was fine Girl, before you come. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What are you, you going to do? You don't fucking believe this, do you? Oh, God, what are you going to do to me? No, I asked you a goddamn question. <laughs> he asked you a goddamn... Yeah, yeah I believe it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't think the FBI has its place under 24-hour surveillance? <laughs> you don't think there's transmitters in all these walls? I mean, I know. Let me ask you one question. Are you having fun here? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Because I promise you... <laughs> I promise you, you and I are gonna have some fun. Oh, no, 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 please. No, What's my fucking name? No, no, no. What is this? I don't know. What is I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. You don't know. No. Shit, do you? No. <laughs> do you think all I want to do is kill you? I don't know. You goddamn right you don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't you just try to relax me, honey? I know it's hard. Girl, I don't see mind the fucking business. Look at this fucking door. <laughs> the woman's a whore, and there's an end on it. That's Samuel Johnson. Oh, take it on out of here. Now, now. Don't you let him get to you, because that's what he wants. <laughs> Will you please tell me what all this is for? Well, you'll have to ask Vilmer that. But if you ask me, I think this son of a bitch is from outer space. Oh, God, what are you going to do? No. What are you going to do? Give her a kiss. <laughs> now, I could have hurt a pretty face like this. <laughs> But then, I am in the mood for love. There now. How's that? You feel better? <gasps> Look at you. You're really pretty. You know what? I have got this dress that I have never even worn, and it would be perfect on you. You're scared. I just don't want to die. Well, of course you don't. Will you help me? Get up in there. Hey, you just hush up yourself. It's just girl talk. I'll tell you what, he's not near as bad as he seems once you get to know him. It's just this job, you know, all the stress. It's his job to kill people. Well, I really shouldn't be telling you this, but you know how you always hear these stories about these people who run everything, but nobody knows who they are, right? Well, it's true. I mean, I never would have believed it, but it's all true. I mean, who do you think killed Kennedy? Government? No, that government stuff is bull crap. It's these people. And they've been doing this kind of thing for like a thousand or two thousand years, I forget which, and nobody, I mean nobody knows their names. And that's who Vilmer works for. So, in that whole clip, while they're torturing her, they bring Heather in and McConaughey, like, when she's like, what are you going to do to her? And he goes, no, what are you going to do? It, it, you think maybe, oh, are they going to get interested and make, like, Renee Zellweger do some shit? They don't. He just bites her in her face. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> 
And then that launches into that uh, scene. I don't know if you have anything that you want to add to that clip. Yeah, they try to represent this sequence in such a way as to start the dinner table scene where they're trying to do that crazed, like we're trapped inside, everything's frenetic and really wide angles, really close up, weird, like filming where things start to distort and warp. And like it's trying to make you feel like your perception of reality is also being warped or something along those lines. And it does that effectively for a few shots where McConaughey is going a little nuts. But the problem is they continue to do it to the point where it feels like a 90s metal band video. Yeah. And like the cliched version of that where they're running around rooms, you know, trying to look intense at the camera and it gets all weird and wide angle and distorted. And it just like just takes you right out of any kind of effect of it being intense. You hear it in the dialogue where he's trying to, you know, scare the shit out of her. And given what we're about to find out what's happening here where it just has to be even more horrific it has to be even more scary you know and that's the thing is they're trying to you know drive up the fear factor for Renee Zellweger's character and she's a tough nut that they can't crack the thing that they basically end up doing is they hurt her friend and that's the only way to actually scare her or make her really acquiesce to anything they have to say because even when they threaten her with hurting her in some way or get really creepy on her she just totally closes down and they got nothing they can't they can't do anything with that and yeah. That was something that was hinted at in the director's cut version that also got cut o- away as to why she has that capability to be able to shut it down and, and fight back. But like it feels really fucking sleazy and exploitative, uh, especially in that clip. Listening back to it was not fun no, at, at it all because you know exactly what they're trying to do here whenever they show her being defiant. It's just that this is all stuff that she's been through before and they've got nothing to threaten her with that she hasn't already been through. And it's just kind of lazy and cheap and shameful that that's the direction they went for the storytelling because it, it doesn't really prove anything and it doesn't do anything. It, yeah. it doesn't herald up the character. All it does is just add in a little more grit and sleaze elements to it. And I really don't like the fact that they've turned a cannibal family into a bunch of backwoods rapey hillbillies. We're, you know, we're, we're going to get that many years later done to a much better effect by somebody who didn't want to completely rip off Chainsaw. So he just made them rapey necrophiliac <laughs> rednecks instead of Chainsaw cannibal rednecks. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm referring which, to House of moves? a Thousand Corpses and yeah, Rob right. Zombie. <laughs> yeah. It's very clearly yeah. him taking a crack at Chainsaw 2 and doing it his rapey way. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in not putting leather face in there. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. There's still a guy walking around wearing other people's faces. Yeah, but it, it's not leather face. <laughs> They don't call him Leatherface. Right, right. Um, That's basically what this is going with. Uh, The last film kind of hinted at it, too. And I think it's just that's where things were going. Uh, Pretty much, you know, when serial killer uh, horror became like, you know, they're trying to do psychological, quote unquote, thrillers like Seven and things like that, which are horror films that they didn't want to call horror films. There was a lot more of these like really dark, twisted sexual themes sort of being driven into horror at the time. And I feel like the 93-ish, whatever shit fest you know Texas Chainsaw 3 that we just watched and the way the family got rapey towards the people they were actually going to eat as well you know like the reason that got shoved in there and the reason that the the family in this movie are acting the way that they are is because it's in the zeitgeist of that's what horror has to be and that's what horror is selling so let's do it yeah Um, and they I I know Kim Hinkle says something about being more influenced in Leatherface and going back to the original thing with Ed Gein and some of the decisions that they make uh, with what's about to happen with Leatherface face i i'll talk about it more when we actually get there when the actual dinner sequence starts happening but that stuff really bugged me more this time around too and i'm kind of wondering if maybe i'm just getting all hoity-toity and you know uh up, up on my not, own though. shit with it's that. not it's because i agree with you you're not getting hoity-toity because it's just it everything they kind of done so far misses the mark and it, it, it for a texas chainsaw massacre movie yeah this, this feels it. like pcu with fucking yeah. chainsaw killers in it yeah yeah, it's just, it's not the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just not. In any way, shape, or form, does it have any kind of feeling like Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It completely misses the mark. Yeah. Uh, arguably more than any of the other films to come before it that were sequels trying to cash in on that lightning in a bottle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's all right. just all... Let's just, it it let's, much let's, reminds me of Friday the 13th New Beginning. Uh, well, there's some parts of that, at least, that are more redeemable than this, I will I, say. I guess. But, well, I mean, but it's it, it seems like a movie that had nothing to do with 
really Friday the 13th, except for they dressed up a Jason character and put it in there. <laughs> I get I get your reference there. Let's just, yeah, okay. let's just finish this uh, off. Let's I'm, keep d- going. I'm done all bitching right. about this. Jesus. So, all right. Wilmo walks in, throws Darla out. Um, he threatens to slit Renee Zellberger's throat, but she says, she's counting. She goes, you don't because you want me alive for some reason. And he's like, yeah, I do. You're really smart. You're a smart person. So um, Velmer then goes in the back into the kitchen, starts slapping Darla around. Then she says, you're embarrassing me in front of guests. And she starts beating him with a shoe. Uh, at this point, Renee Zellberger is able to get a shotgun and she threatens all of them. They all start getting down except for Velmer, who's like, he's not afraid. He freaks up and starts fucking up Darla more like choking her and Renee's trying to tell her friend to get up but her friend can't really wake up at all um so then Renee Zellweger decides she's gonna shoot Volmer she tries and the barrel she tries is empty he grabs it and he shoots it up into the air the other barrel was loaded but she's able to run away from him and uh, gets into uh, uh, a car or, uh, Darla's car and drives away but he Matthew McConaughey dro- stops on the uh, hood he falls off the hood but he had unlatched something so the hood dro- pops up she can't see and she wrecks and it knocks her out and that leads into our final 20 minutes let's just get it over with uh, real um, quick just oh, wanted to ahead. yeah the McConaughey delivery scenes like where he's not being talked down and he's just speaking all this gibberish yeah. and um, they kind of hint at this that they've been working for this much bigger thing and yeah. like he starts talking about it too and he's talking about how there's like all these you know sensors in the walls or something like that or the walls filled with transmitters or some yeah, shit yeah, like that. Yeah 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 he says uh, like the FBI is listening and all that. Right so he goes off on all this weird thing and it's it's supposed to be hinted at that like they're crazy and they think this is what's going on and that they have to do the things that they're doing and if they don't make it even more horrific than what they are then you know all these people that have been listening to them they're going to get busted for all the things that they've done so they just have to keep going or some yeah. bullshit like that but the way that McConaughey delivers it you can see eventually this man can make any improbable horse shit believable just by the way that he explains it when he looks straight at you through the camera as the audience like he's the man's a fine actor yeah he's really good at what he does and that particular yeah particular moment i mean if you're gonna brave this film and you made it that far you get yourself a little treat here because you see the greatness that mcconaughey is about to achieve and the way that zellweger is playing off of him you can see that she's got some passion and she's got some fire and she actually has the ability to hold her own with another actor and all of their interactions in this are actually rather pleasant to watch even though it's the same tired bullshit dialogue we've heard a million times in any kind of horror movie that is written off the Texas Chainsaw Massacre before this one did it as ineffectually as it has. They get to this point and there's like this little kind of a moment where you see what could have been in this film with those two acting off of each other. Yeah. And then they do more shit with the remote on the leg and the leg starts falling apart and then you realize that he's got like a back of a Hoover vacuum cleaner thing duct taped to his ass and somehow that powers his leg with all the batteries on his belt and Yeah, I was wanted, I wanted to say he has a bum leg and it's in but he has a robotic thing around it not just a brace but a, like a, almost a robotic thing that he has to use and, a remote control to fire for it to like yeah straighten and then pull up for some reason yes but any yes. remote will do it so people keep using remotes to paralyze him yeah i was gonna mention that here that that we see that coming up later yeah but yeah okay yeah but anyway there are moments in there that actually are good but it's also completely undercut by every decision that is doing this wacky shit like that and yeah. it ruins any kind of tension. Like, and I. <sighs> I wonder and I suspect that if this Illuminati thing that they're setting up here and then we find out later on is like more of a story point than what they really hinted at earlier, if all of this is supposed to be true, then the fact of the matter is he really is trying to do all of this to, um, you know, entertain people and the transmitters and all the people that are supposedly listening and all of that stuff are actually they're 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 supposed to be entertaining people. Is that what it is for I, this weird secret or, society or because or, well, the guy that I'll get into that later. Apparently, why? No, this but is I, I'm I'm not saying that's not what we. It's not what is actually happening. But is that what he's trying to say? Is what he's doing? You know, Maybe, like he's yes. being monitored to make sure that he's doing this the way that he's supposed to be doing it for someone else's benefactor yeah. and entertainment. Like that's what they're hinting at. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. They bring this in like pretty much 40 minutes already we're into the movie and they're like already bored with redneck zombie torture family from yeah. from uh cabin in the woods now we're going to go from redneck zombie torture family to international conspiracy into the storm time fucking something i don't know <laughs> it's more like a fucking uh, or or is it just a bunch of fucking crazy people who don't care about nothing i <laughs> Well, I, I actually have done some research as to who it's supposed to represent. So yeah. we're both right and we're both wrong. Okay. Well, I love it when that happens. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Let's just finish this piece of shit off now and then we'll talk about that because that's literally the only interesting thing that we have left. All right. Well, um, the final 20 minutes, um, we see Leatherface getting all dressed up fancy like he uh, has now put on, I guess, be a she now. Uh, she has done herself up and is in a dress and is, is in women's makeup in a different like face and apparatus completely it's almost um, like a 60s housewife lingerie house coat combination to titillate and yet still cover everything yeah is what uh this version of leatherface who is presenting as female so i would say she is wearing as well uh this yes. is the part i had a serious problem with um this felt right. to me as they were trying to use leatherface trans panic kind of thing as shock value not oh they definitely were yeah not not so much in that, like, oh, this is an exploration of all of his different sexual, you know, proclivities, or maybe Leatherface has some kind of gender fluid, uh, you know, representation of themselves and will become a she as well as a he whenever the, the time fits or however they are feeling at that time. That's not what this is. This is literally, let's piss off the fanboys who already wanted Leatherface to become, you know, the next Jason or Freddy, and let's get a trans panic moment out of everybody and will have him not only dress up in someone else's skin, but the skin of her friend and yeah. trying to emulate that personality and act like her. And it's... Oh, wait, that's not the skin of Renee Zellweger's friend, though. Renee Zellweger's friend is actually at dinner. I know, but you, you get what no. I'm saying. Like, yeah. it's it, it's just another exploitative element of what they're actually doing yes. with this leather face where they decide to have a leather face. And it's it, it's kind of hinting at the whole like trans panic thing with what they're trying to do. They're trying to make oh, you yeah. feel more freaked out. Because, wow, this Leatherface is way more intense than any of the other ones. He dresses up like a she. And, of course, that means he's extra fucked up and shit, right? Right. This is such fucking bullshit, and it's yeah. really not aged well at all. No, not at all. Not even a little. I mean, they've. it's not that they haven't hinted at uh, Leatherface taking on different uh, personas, depending upon what face that he may be wearing, because there is a very matronly grandmother character that shows up in the original. But it's not done in such a way as to pan you other you know with that kind of thing it's not supposed to be uh some kind of weird titillation thing or played off for it to be anything different than the mental illness of thinking you're a different person by wearing someone else's face yeah that's exactly that's all it is but this one is very much more exploitative and wink wink nudge nudge and fuck that i don't like it no and you shouldn't it's fucking horseshit all right good i'm glad that we line up on that and i'm not overreacting oh, yeah. you no, felt that you're way not overreacting me. at all that's it's fucking gross so yeah and it's it is it's a bad it's bad juju yeah bad, it pretty much stuff. it pretty much pushes it to the point where it's like yeah i don't really know if i ever want to watch this again after this yeah right um so anyway, uh, Darla uh, meets up with uh, Vilmer, and she fucks up with one. She fucks around with one remote control, fucks up his leg. He's like, "Hey, that's awesome!" And they start making out. Um, it was a weird ass scene to have just in there. They're trying so, to make it seem like they're into sadomasochism, and he likes yeah. the fact that she can, you know, take his leg out from underneath him at any time. And then he gets angry and, that, and aggressive, and, and they that, have violent sex. Yeah, and, he, and that she likes poking him a bit, you know, for as violent as he is, you know. Yeah, she so, likes to. Renee, send him over the edge and it's just another one of those like little extra piece of titillation to be like see how fucked up they are they like bdsm yeah <laughs> well then uh they slap her on when he's uh we to wake her up she's at the dinner table she's surrounded by velmer darla um heathers uh heathers there um W's there, Leatherface is there, and then we see a dead family of uh, mom, dad, and daughter, and at the head of the table, a dead-looking old man. Then we find out that Leatherface wants Renee Zellweger's face during some arguments, and they're all screaming. It's very chaotic. Uh, Vilmer hits W in the head with a hammer, uh, looking like he kills him. Uh, the old guy gets up, grabs a knife, and just walks off. 
Um, who he looked like he was dead, but I guess he wasn't. But he just got up and walked away holding the knife. Uh, then nothing ever comes to that. Renee Zellweger then tells him all off. So it's like, you know, go fuck yourself. You know, uh, Leatherface starts to get up and she tells him to sit the fuck down or her to sit the fuck down. And she does. She kind of does what she's told. She kind of puts everyone in their place. And this fucking flips out. She's like, either kill me or not. But she goes, I'm kind of tired of listening to you. And this kind of flips McConaughey out and he leaves. And he comes back and he dumps lighter fluid, uh, ga- gasoline on uh, Heather lights her on fire. Darla puts her out. Um, and then we see a limo pull up, and some dude comes in, and he tells Renee Zellweger everything's gonna be fine, but to sit there. Uh, then he talks to Vilmer and said that these people need to know what true horror is. Then he opens up his shirt, and he has this weird design in his stomach with three piercings. Then he starts licking uh, uh, Renee Zellweger's face before he leaves. Um, weird stuff it's scarification so the, designs that looked very yeah. much like mayan symbology in some way yeah. shape or form it was, or it was a horrific uh effect though yeah just uh and then the piercings in his stomach i just think are like they went through pieces of skin for like the rings for hanging like yeah. like for someone who does suspension or is into suspension for that permanent piercing and given the way that those uh pieces of welts looked it looks like he likes to suspend for quite a while from those too because you know there's like some scarring and it, it became like this mound of flesh yeah. around where those those piercings are or they just kept doing the scarification until that stuck out and then put the suspension rings in i don't know but the idea is look at this excessive body modification isn't this super horrific these people are obviously super fucked up yeah this guy shows up and he's clearly part of this organization and he's in charge and you know he's ordering Valmer or whatever the fuck his name is around uh this is supposed to be the illuminati the idea is the illuminati so yeah. all the stuff that the illuminati did and all the things that they were talking about the conspiracy theories and all of that shit it's illuminati which i don't know if you knew this or not but that's kind of some of the villainry that got roped in with that q shit or according to the documentary of course they, yes, they reference that because any conspiracy theory works as long as q says it does and they uh-huh. can bring it all in you know just to keep duping more idiots into believing more bullshit and storming the Capitol for Trump just to see if they can get away with it for the lols. That's what Q's all about, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What Q did was they took a lot of different conspiracy theories that just were already there and have been there for decades and that were never politicized. It was just a bunch of conspiracy theorists having a good time, wondering what was going on, and then they took it for their own cause and made it extremely racist. So, um, thanks, Q, for ruining what was a hobby of mine of being a conspiracy theorist. Now I don't even really pay attention to that shit anymore because fuck it. And but the only thing I do pay attention to is like UFOs and that kind of shit, and that's about it. And this is another one of those things that See, has been since ruined, but like at the time frame that this movie came out, it was was something that was very popular where people were speculating the government was hiding this kind of shit and this the, sort the of government shit was going and the on. rich but, yeah, and like the bankers and all that. Yeah. And they've, you know, they've told, listen, I used to have great times if I was doing nothing on a weekend night and I was up till three in the morning going down the rabbit hole on the internet. And all that fun left once Trump and his fucking cohorts came in because then you can't do any of that without running into one of their horrific fucking videos that don't make any sense. So it kind of just fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I'm saying at the time this was something that was really yeah, at the popular time, this is, in the zeitgeist. Yeah. I mean, this is this is X Files time, so these big yeah. conspiracies are a thing that people are just working in, and it feels very much like by the time it actually shows up here, shoehorned in. I mean, we're almost at the end of this movie, and the yeah. guy finally shows up, and it turns out all along the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family has been working for an amalgamation of Illuminati type conspiracy, you know, organization. Yeah, apparently. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Who finds that scary? Honestly, I don't, I don't know. All right. So, well, anyway, um, then uh, Wilmer then goes over and crushes Heather's head with his little leg brace thing. You you don't really see it; you just hear it. Well, and McConaughey starts- plays it really well with um, getting yeah. super intense and all red faced, and like he's holding yeah. his breath to make it look like it's really he's hard work. Straining to do it. Yeah, I mean, he really sells it more than anything, and that's all they had because they probably couldn't afford the melon stomp like uh, Troma does. Yeah. Well, then um, uh, he starts cutting himself, and then Darla tackles him, so he stops. 
Yeah, she's upset because she doesn't want him to scar his body because it doesn't yeah. look as attractive for her, I think, is what she yeah. was getting at. Oh, that's exactly what she was getting at. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an odd flex, but okay, lady. Yeah. So then Renee Zellweger, uh, she tries to get away, but he is able to get her and pick her back up. They fight. She's able to get a remote. They fight with her leg. So his leg keeps going, going. Oh, and she's this able was to get so away. so bad. Oh, it was really bad. Yeah, that fight was terrible. She gets away and they're, they're chasing her. And she's able to get into a RV that's driving by. And they're, you think she's getting away. Then the RV gets T-boned by the tow truck and, 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 uh, McConaughey. And she gets out of the RV and runs away. And then this plane's flying around, and the plane dips down, and the plane kills Vilmer, uh, McConaughey, while he's running to get her. At this point, that makes Leatherface just start freaking out constantly. Uh, and a limo picks up Renee Zellweger, uh, and it's that dude from before. And the, the suit dude with the piercings. And that leads to our final clip. Oh, no, no, no. You have nothing to fear. We yeah. have a kind of this boomless It's been an abomination. You really must accept my sincere apologies. It was supposed to be a spiritual experience. I can't tell you how disappointed I am. I suppose it's something we all live with. People like us who strive for something and a sense of harmony. Perhaps it's disappointment that keeps us going. La raison d'être. Unfortunately, it's never been easy for me. One of my many failings. Fuck you. Would you like to go to the local hospital? Or to a police station? So, all right. So it's it's supposed to it was supposed to give them a religious type of experience or something to be that scared. Whatever. Um, Renee Zellweger ends up at a hospital. Um, and uh, a cop's trying to talk to her. Uh, this lady and Renee Zellweger. Uh, she comes by in a gurney and they make eye contact. I don't exactly that, that get was, it. That was Marilyn Burns from the original, my man. Oh, was it? Yes. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, that's. Well, I. I mean, it's you know. <laughs> It wasn't super obvious, but like it, it's Marilyn Burns. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there's a callback, and then it's uh, okay, and then roll credits. I mean, that was just insane. <laughs> I mean, not in a good way. That was just that was just entirely too weird. Your assessment of the kind of ramblings of a meth head being yeah. the, the way that this was written are not exactly wrong. Yeah, it's that same kind of weird frenetic, but it just keeps going down a rabbit hole of shadow people and the Illuminati and yeah, you know, the idea that uh, you are being tortured to have some kind of transcendental experience. I feel like they were trying to do some kind of like higher minded meta thing with the film, but it got chopped up and destroyed so much that that whole idea that like we as an audience are watching this to you know have a transcendent actual experience with the horror to where we have a spiritual connection with what happens like that's what horror is supposed to do it's supposed to scare you to the point where it illuminates you and makes you feel something and sometimes may even teach you a lesson or or give you some kind of uh, a feeling of an appreciation for your life or you know just make you glad that you're allowed to be alive still just because you're a little bit scared it's a safe scare you know that kind of thing like yeah maybe that's the commentary hinkle was trying to do by doing all of this like i can see some elements of where maybe they were like doing some higher minded thinking with putting this script together and trying to do the story the way that they're doing but it is so especially in this theatrical cut that we watched so horrifically butchered and so just all over the place and sporadic and somewhat frenetic and insane and hard to follow but not in the way that part two was uh to where it's fun and and you're constantly distracted by the fact that some new big shiny thing is happening, you know, like like what happens with uh, <laughs> when you're on, you know, coke, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this one is very much like math because it gets hyper fixated on shit that does, you know, you don't you don't you shouldn't really care about otherwise. But all of a sudden you're tearing apart the remote and scrubbing the circuit board with a toothbrush. 
You know, like True. that's what this movie is. It's that kind of yeah. idea. And it hyper fixates on things that you really shouldn't care about at all. Like all of a sudden, the idea that this whole Illuminati project is this ongoing thing and they want to expand this out so that it's not just a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but this sort of thing happens everywhere all around the world. Um, this was done like really masterfully in the original Martyrs. That idea. Um, yeah. Rather well, actually, you know, like to, this <laughs> transcendental experience where you are tortured to the point where you achieve almost like a saint euphoria style like um you know vision of the other world like that's what they're trying to achieve like that's kind of what they're doing here or hinting at but they're failing miserably and missing the mark and ham-fistedly throwing ideas at the wall and hoping stuff sticks and it's literally monkeys trying to type hamlet and this is what we got instead like this yeah it's just such a fucking mess it's so disappointing it's so fucking hard to watch and the parts that are are actually uncomfortable are more or less you just feel uncomfortable for the actors being forced to do this horse shit and degrade themselves like this to try and make the film feel intense and scary and the end result is just a bad scooby-doo episode that you kind of want to just shut off yeah that's that's very true <laughs> it's it's not Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's nothing about it that says Texas Chainsaw Massacre when you watch it. Um, Except for the fact that Kim Hinkle was the original co-author and, you know, did a lot of the work with Tobey Hooper on the original. This has absolutely nothing to do with Texas Chainsaw. This is shoehorning in Texas Chainsaw because you have another script you want to get done. Like, if because they never even called Leatherface Leatherface, if you would have named this movie um, Psycho Torture Hillbillies, then you would have been like, wow, they have a character that's kind of like Leatherface in this. You use a, they use a chainsaw and all that shit. Oh, well. I mean, but you wouldn't think anything else. Uh, except in, uh, in the beginning, I guess, can't be there either. Well, yeah, the reason that it is that way is because they are psycho torture hillbillies that are yeah. being basically controlled by the Illuminati and paid to do this to yeah, force people but to I'm have just religious saying, experiences. If you, if you watched it, you'd be like, okay... Uh- I mean, Nobody would watch be it like, because it didn't have the title Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. The Next but, Generation, or The Return of the Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. That's why. If you didn't have the beginning narration or the movie named Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and again, called it Psycho Hillbillies, and watched it, you'd be like, ah, huh, I mean, that movie sucked, and I can't believe they tried to rip off Leatherface in that movie. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's, nobody would that's watch all it. You that's, did. They couldn't just call yeah, it no Psycho one, Hillbilly and no Torture one would watch Family, it. and no one would yeah, fucking right. watch it. That's the point. Yep. And guess what? No one fucking watched it anyway, apparently. It was fucking yeah. awful. And let's stop oh. fucking talking about it, because we have some fucking feedback, and I'd rather talk about that. Yeah, me too. Are you having trouble keeping up with the ebbs and flows of modern geekery? Is the real world holding you back from knowing what is happening in the geeky world? To answer these and other personal problems brought in by your friends, gaming group, and loved ones, Geek Radio Daily presents daily informational sessions brought to you by the wonderful Billy Flynn, the Flynnstress, and podcasting's Rich Siegfried. They contain such helpful segments as history, geek birthdays, box office results, the latest in DVD and Blu-ray, video game and comic releases. Why, they also have a weekly show hosted by the wonderful Billy Flynn and the Flynnstress, which includes interviews and commentary. And to make sure you are informed, Geek Radio Daily also provides you with your daily dose of geek news to make sure you know more than that jerk know-it-all Steve. Visit us at geekradiodaily.com. That's right, Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. Now available in fine Corinthian leather.
unashamedly a fan of the Killer Barbies, sitting here behind the microphone is your host, Court Psyops. <laughs> they wrote a song Why called They wrote a song called Chainsaw Time. Time, so I had to put it in here. Of course. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we wasted so much time on the fucking movie. We need to get to this. It's uh Time for incoming mail! All right, so I've been asking, I've been trying to get at least one piece of feedback every week just to kind of celebrate, and uh, we got two this week, so that's great. Uh, Both folks double-checked with me via Messenger to make sure that I got the message through, and the first one to come in was Scott, so here we go. Greetings, Court and Matt. This is Smoke Show here. Just wanted to send you guys a congratulatory message for hitting five years and a little over 300 episodes now. And the fact that you guys release a episode every single week and have not missed a single day, that is impressive as shit. And I wanted to just thank you guys for giving us such great content to listen to. Like, you guys have been a part of my life now for, yeah, I'd say about four and a half years. Because by the time I came across your show, it was when you were guest spotting on Outside the Cinema and doing your top ten slashers. And I just loved your guys' chemistry so much, I had to find your show and start off with the subspecies episodes and started, and obviously went back through your back catalog and then have been listening ever since. Every single time an episode gets released, it is downloaded and uh, put in my car for Monday morning drive to work. And the fact that you guys are covering the madness that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise oh, just makes me happy because this franchise is a fucking mess because of all the different timelines but at the same time i have a kind of uh guilty pleasure love for the franchise even though it makes no damn sense uh but yeah just wanted to say congratulations guys love you and will always be a garbage person garbage day huh? no Scott Crawford making his own drops at the end of clips. Well done. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Okay, so I might have been saying five years, but I'm miscounted as well. This is our sixth year. This is closing out our sixth year. We're going into seven years. Um, That's crazy. I know I myself kept saying five because I'm thinking, you know, this is our sixth year that we're in. You know, we're still trying to fill out. So we're like 75% of the way there, barreling towards the last, you know, (laughs) 25% percent to be completely done and uh yeah we're six fucking years we've been doing this man for over 300 episodes and we have not missed a consecutive week for the as of right now 303 for the recording let's see how the releases go and now i'm doing two edits a week for everybody yeah hey, yay. <laughs> yeah there's one for the legion patreon subscribers that will get the complete pirate radio edit like we've been doing uh as of the start of this franchise fest and uh then the main feed's still gonna have what it has but it's a little more confusing because you're wondering why this library music has me talking about the killer barbies yeah right well i mean (laughs) everything's fine now yeah and i just i'm trying to get everybody to celebrate with us here you know we're closing out our our sixth year and i just would like to have something every week for the rest of the full franchise fest if we can do it um as long as we can keep the trend going let's do it now i'm not saving the messages as they come in i'm playing them so i'm hoping that we can get this going without repeats i think that would be kind of a fun way to celebrate you know i think so and our fans can you know get back to us and our fellow podcasters can kind of support us and that would be kind of awesome speaking of that uh dan from corrupted youth now this is interesting um he messaged me and said something about um making sure that a message got through for the 300 episodes um okay i I don't know when this was recorded but apparently dan's podcast has an intern i want to know how i get an intern but yeah he was i asked him about it and i guess there's some kid that um his son goes to school with that is doing something in audio production and needs to get some hours so dan somehow now has a fucking intern that's fucking amazing yeah and the intern actually is the one who sent me the message so like i like to do here whenever i get a message i read the email as well just because i'm really trying to pad out any celebration of me that i can because of course i need you external... love me so you love you some you yeah i need some external validation and being told how awesome i am makes me feel better about myself because i really don't like myself much so yeah i mean we got to do something for ourselves because we are just fucking messes over here okay so here's the message uh happy belated 300th 
300th. Hi, Court. Dan and Brennan's new intern here. I recorded the dongle's 300th episode feedback for your program. Please see the attached file. Hang in there. Uh, I won't say the intern's name, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, official corrupted youth intern, Moby. I'll, I can say the first name. Moby is the uh, first name. There you go. So they got Moby as their intern. Wow. They, they must really be moving oh, up really? in the podcasting world. Moby? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Go Guess figure. Techno didn't pan out for him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but here's the message from Dan and Brennan from Corrupted Youth via Moby. Yeah, so I don't know, man. Like he's been posting all this stuff on Facebook about I don't know. He like seems really desperate for feedback. I kind of feel bad. Yeah, it's like he's like really wanting you know just everyone to come on and say, oh, happy you know 300th episode. You know, it's like okay, buddy, like calm down. Okay, so what? Some people missed it. Like how much? He got some responses like, oh, geez, he needs more. Like we all know, like we might, con- we all congratulate you, but like we really need to like all like make this whole big deal and record something. I know. And then he's like trying to pimp out mad on stuff too. And I, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah. It's an awesome show and all, but ah, geez. Like have we got any recording messages for any of our miles? Oh, I mean, Grant, we haven't really hit any, but. I know. I mean, we got that 50th coming up. I don't expect anybody to send anything for that. I no. Mean, it just feels kind of desperate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, geez, you know, like we went, we did all these like huge production numbers for the 100th and 200th episodes. And, and now here we are, 300th. Yeah. I don't know. What more can we say? I mean, I got nothing. Congrats. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh, hey. Oh, oh hey. Oh, hey. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, we're, we're recording now. Oh, okay. Happy 300th episode, guys. Yeah, Cinema Psyops 300 episodes. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Dan and Brennan from Corrupted Youth Podcast. We're really happy. We have free will and we have chosen to do this. Yeah. Out of our love. Yeah, sorry we didn't get to you earlier, but you know, like, oh, life gets in the way sometimes and mm-hmm. our bad, but hey, we figured better late than never right Bren? that's right okay yeah so way to go guys um also by the way brennan did some research didn't you bren mm-hmm, i did yeah and uh he has all of your actual real names and everything so yep. um we're gonna hold him ransom yeah otherwise we'll dox you unless you do mm-hmm. another 300 episodes yeah you're gonna get a lot of extra large cheese pizzas ordered to your house and you'll have to pay for them all you know what we know you guys can't eat that many pizzas mm-hmm like you can make get there like probably half mm-hmm. sure but then what are you gonna do with the rest yeah it's gonna stink it. up your fridge it's gonna yep. be no good you're gonna get sick of pizza mm-hmm. so make another 300 episodes we love you guys thanks court matt for sticking with it 300 weeks in a row well, yeah it's gonna be over that by now but yeah sorry guys oh well <laughs> is that it is that all we gotta do yeah i think that's that they'd probably laugh yeah. at that you think they're gonna they're gonna be okay with it yeah. What are they going to do if they don't yeah, like it? Yeah, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so I don't think they know they were recording there, Court. <laughs> yeah, um, apparently their intern uh, sucks. So, uh, oh, damn. Yeah, fuck. So this Moby. is this is why maybe Moby was concentrating too much on emo fucking techno music and didn't fucking realize he should have been not recording there. Yeah, either that or he was filing yet another injunction against threats of violence for uh, Eminem and all the stuff that he says that Obi's going to do to him on his behalf. Yeah, right? Jesus. (laughs) Oh, that's a deep fucking reference for nothing that no one fucking cares about. Let's just end this piece of shit fucking show. But before I do, uh, Scott Smoke Show, uh, he is part of the Friday Nightmares podcast, and I know there's a gaming one that they do as well. I can't remember the name of that, Scott. And I am so fucking sorry, but if you send us something else in, you can say the name of it. That's totally fine. Or just send, just message me, PM me right now as you're listening to this in your drive to work and say, court, you fuck up. You forgot such and such. That's the show that you forgot the name of. And I'll say it on the air next week so that you'll get that name out there too. How about that? And of course, Dan and Brennan and uh, their really shitty intern. Uh, <laughs> from, yeah. Fucking Moby. From Corrupted Youth. Thank you very much, guys. And ouch. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Ouch very much as well that I'm begging for. I'm sorry. I need a lot of external validation and I feel like finishing six years of podcasting nonstop new episodes every week is probably something that I shouldn't, you know, be shamed for doing, I guess. But 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. That seemed, uh, yeah, they they were kind of like, hey, what the fuck? That's fucking you know, hurtful. You, there's, Real yeah, fucking there's hurtful. no reason to say shit like that. You know, if I didn't like Dan's new podcast he's doing with his spouse, which I think is called One Two Ghost Show, I believe is the name of it. If I didn't like that so much, I probably would have been super pissed about what they just pulled there. Yeah, but fuck it. They <laughs> seem like nice enough characters. <laughs> Am I feigning enough outrage yet? That was really funny. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think it's fine. Hey, do you think our intern's still recording? this <laughs> we don't actually have an intern and i'm not faking it just for you to make a dumb joke and it is I... one two ghost show so let's just end this fucking horseshit show <laughs> all right let's get the fuck out of here if you enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. Actually was featured on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation soundtrack that I will be including in this show. Well, there you go. <laughs> just to demonstrate just how painful said music actually was while watching said film. Yeah. But that experience that is over. We're done. We don't have to complain about that anymore. If you want to look up any of the previous 302 instances where we may or may not have belly ached about the films we were covering, that is available legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops that is our main landing and launching page for the podcast your rss feed all the links you need everything's there legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops we're also represented in the form of repurposed memes for the people at our instagram cinema underscore psyops that is the meme repository for all of our repurposed memes for the people for the people we take your memes and we make them for all the people we are very socialist when it comes to our memes. <laughs> we don't steal your memes. We share our memes. That's right. There's also a Facebook group where the memes are also dumped from the repository on the Instagram. That is just Cinema PsyOps there. You can also post your own memes. You can share stuff there. You can have a lot of fun. It's a bunch of weirdos just hanging out and trying to stay calm and get one step ahead of that zucking band one more time. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> exactly. Because they're going back six, seven years now trying to find stuff to mark you folks for because that's just how Zuck works. Fuck that. That's, 
fucks suck. <laughs> I'm almost done completely on social media. If it weren't for some of the weirdo deviants that show up in the group, I probably would be done with Facebook altogether. I'm on it less and less, and it's only just to keep in contact with listeners at this point. I was so not blaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available there as Court PsyOps if you want to make Facebook more worth my while, and Matt is also available there to ignore you as Matt PsyOp. Yes. What is it, 19 it's weeks now, Darren? Has it been 19, 19 weeks, yeah, something like that. Yeah, of emailing feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com without a response for 19 solid weeks. I've never even heard of Facebook. What is social media? You can email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. And then also all of our well wishes for the closing out of year six, because we're far enough away from our 300 episode. Now we're just celebrating the fact that we are closing out our sixth year of podcasting nonstop. That can all be sent to cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. You can also tweet a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the shameless hornbot filled heaven that allows me to block and mute anything I want known as Twitter. I am at court underscore psyop living in an echo chamber of naked ladies. And he is also psyop Matt doing pretty much the same thing, but not living it out loud so proudly. No, no, I can't. I'm not that proud about it. (laughs) I feel pretty bad about everything I do. Yeah, but then again, one of your kinks is being shamed. So that's kind of your thing and you're totally into it. You're just bringing it up. Makes Yeah, I'm just all right. Yeah, well, if... Let's get this show finished so I can go take care of some business. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you are also out there looking to take care of some business and BDSM may or may not be the sort of thing that you or consenting adults are into, kick the fuck out of that consenting adult and this weekend make it your fit. <laughs> start recording so we can get this over with as quickly as possible (laughs) it is now recording one two three on the plus side we have two pieces of feedback so begging and begging and begging has you know paid off at least a little bit i'm trying i'm trying to get at least one piece of feedback for every episode for at least the tcm ones let it be known begging has worked (laughs) yeah it's the only reason you have a kid well that and jägermeister pretty much yeah that and and alcohol but yeah you're you're not wrong (laughs) it's jägermeister specifically though wasn't it yes 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 it was specifically jägermeister and um martinis as gross as that combo sounds then it does to me every day now that that's awesome all right well uh you can hear this yeah yep all right then um let's just fucking get this over with (laughs) let's fucking please let's do all right here we go to get prostate cancer, he should know his dad is a uh, doctor. Okay, so, so am I to believe that you have never lied your way into having sex with a woman or anyone? No, no. You have never knowingly deceived someone about the terrible pain that will happen to you if you don't have sex with them immediately. No, never. Why are you saying no like this is such a horrible thing to do? Like, what's, it's a fucking horrible thing to do. What's, what's so bad about that? What makes you such a bad person for knowingly deceiving someone right okay all right. I, I just <laughs> you got it now it, saying it out that way and now I, I see what's wrong with some of the decisions that you may have done before in your life matt what, wait what i said no <laughs> what did you do i have been advised by my attorneys <laughs> not to answer that question and how many fucking attorneys do you have enough to where it's plural bitch <laughs> That's a lot of fucking attorneys. Yeah, I mean, he's a horrible, horrible, horrible piece of shit, obviously. But I would also like to make an egregious counterpoint here. Playing devil's (laughs) advocate to outrage you and prolong the show because I have nothing else to talk about. All right. But you're not actually going to play devil's advocate. You're just going to say you're playing devil's advocate, right? Right right here is where I ordinarily would do such a thing to prolong the episode. But I give so little of a fuck about this movie. I'm not even doing that. I'm just going to prolong it by telling you the format of the show that I normally use. And this is the 
the part where I am now outraged by your devil's advocate, and I cannot believe you were raised in, like, a, a proper home, and I believe you need help. And maybe you should go outside and throw the ball around a little bit. Okay, right. move on. Right, and then I make some kind of weird declarative statement that makes me sound even more like a serial killer, but scares you just enough to backtrack what you just said. Yeah, wow. Okay, and that is a little bit scary, so we should go ahead and get back to the note. Yeah, why don't we? All right. <laughs> Fuck, that's, that's the most mailed in we've ever gotten. That's great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Renee Zellweger, uh, Barry, and by the way, I never even learned her name. I just call her Renee Zellweger. I don't even do that for Matthew McConaughey. I learned his name. Renee Zellweger, I just call her Renee Zellweger throughout this whole fucking thing. I could call her Squinty Eye McGee, I guess, but I won't do that. Um, so, I believe Narcissistic Squint would probably work better for her. <laughs> narcissistic Squint. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's always fucking sunny wherever she is. <laughs> Get a pair of sunglasses. God damn. That narcissistic so, squint routine, um, that line I stole from Tracy Ullman. Remember when she came back for a little while and did an HBO special? That was one that's of right. things. He did the oh, narcissistic squint. Yeah. That's fucking great. <laughs> You are just encouraging them to break yeah. windows in order to see your breasts. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I know a teenage Matt would have totally done that. No, no, I wouldn't. I, 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 you know, believe it or not, I was actually a pretty good kid. I didn't go around like breaking other people's property and shit. <laughs> it just didn't. Yeah, but if it made men, now, you got now, to see now what I would have done, what I would have done, what I would have done is I would have heard someone else plan to do it, and then I would have drove behind them, and when they did it, I still would have gotten the peak without committing the felony. See, just because you're modern in a different day problems car, require modern day solutions. <laughs> just because you're in a different car does not mean that you are not traveling I, with them and culpable. I was just I was just out for a drive and I got behind these people and they did this and I was like, oh my god, why would they do that? And then, oh, boobs. But I didn't know that they were going to do that. If only you were actually that smart to plan that kind of stuff out. Yeah, I mean, ahead of time, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> I was an idiot when I was a kid. <laughs> I got away with so much shit that if I were to have gotten caught, I'd probably still be locked up. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> into kick the fuck out of that consenting adult and this week and make it your bitch <laughs> oh that was such a long way to get there and it was so not worth it and i so don't fucking care the fuck it man not after this movie fuck it uh, oh my god i think we got something good out of it but i really didn't want it to be that bash fest but like what else can you do with that you can't really do anything other than that and it wasn't just a bash fest to bash fest we gave really good points as to why we're bashing this. So we weren't just saying, wow, this just sucks. It just plain old sucks. We were going into reasons why it sucked. So I, th I think when you do that... On your it, part, you gave it a better review than Master of the Flying Guillotine. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> Are you still recording? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just stop it here. All right. I'm done. And I have stopped.